So it's been a little while. I went to college, I made some other videos, and uh, yeah, I finished the entire Higurashi series. To be clear, that was before all the other things. That, that first season just had me hooked. Unfortunately, that means that to make this video, I had to rewatch it, and you know what? I'm not pussying out. I'm gonna write the script while watching it, just like last time, because why? Consistency. So we last left off on this group shot. So to make this even funnier, right after this, they all got gassed and died to a natural disaster. Oh yeah, except for Rika, she kind of just mentally pieced out way before these two started fighting and said, well, guess I'll die. So next timeline starts with Rika being a little shit as usual, and season two starts pretty much the same, except they play zombie tag, and yeah, that's pretty fun. Oh yeah, also Shion transferred there, because why not? Anyways, Keiichi gets rightfully bullied for an episode before Rika learns from Sadako that, oh hey, some stuff from the previous timeline they're coming out of her mouth, and that's somewhat new. So yada yada, you get the gist. Something something, strange death, something something Watanagashi festival. By this point, I'm just going to assume you know that's happening every time. People on Hinamizawa hate Sadako, like hate her. Understand Understandable, considering some of the shit she gets up to. Keiichi gets invited to a baseball game and fucking bullies the pitcher into letting him win. Anyways, Rika starts letting it slip that she knows what's going on and that she'll be killed after the festival, so Sadako justifiably is like, well, that's pretty weird. Unfortunately, Rika is like, nuh uh, that's not weird, you're weird. Little things in this timeline are changing, so Rika's feeling a little hopeful for once in her, like, however many lives she's lived. So these two dumb fucks go into the shrine again and wah wah they die again. So yeah, you just assume this is also happening. So Rika's already like, welp, I'm fucked. Some guy is following Rika and Sadako, but Rika's still hitting her with a nuh uh. So uh, yeah, also Irie like overdose or something, I don't know. So Sadako set up some traps, but Rika's just fully given up by this point. So she's kind of like, eh, fuck it, why not get kidnapped and stabbed to death? So yeah, Sadako finds her, screams like an idiot, gets chased like an idiot, and falls off a bridge. So yeah, she wakes up and finds the entire town got gassed because of a natural disaster and died again, and then Sadako basically goes catatonic, and yeah, and also because I guess literally everything needs to go as bad as possible, the minute she's like, I'm gonna go tell everybody what happened, her nurse has some sort of sleeper agent activation and just offs her. So it took like 30 episodes, but Rika finally explains that she's been reliving the same week in Hinamizawa, where in each timeline, something small changes, causing slightly different events. The only constants are Tomitake and Takano always die, and always right after, she dies, and then in every world, this is inevitable. She has no idea who kills her and for what reason. This is all fine and dandy, but you can probably guess all of this if you were just paying a bit of attention. No, the, the only real new thing she reveals is that she's going back later and later into the week meaning that she's slowly getting to a point where even if she goes back, it'll be too late to change anything. This is only possible because of Hanyu, a new character who probably had more foreshadowing in the visual novel, but basically only started appearing in the anime around now. She kind of just listens to Rika ramble and fumbles around a lot, but she's good moral support for her, I guess. I don't know, I don't really like her. Also, she's like the actual Oyashiro or something. I don't know, they'll probably explain it. Rika gets bored of playing Uno, so Keiichi's like, I will break fate, and then he does the breaking fate thing, which leaves Rika stunned, even though he basically just did the equivalent of saying, let's play Scrabble. So I guess I wasn't paying enough attention tension in season one, because according to them, all of this was because of this doll, which is fucking hilarious. So this is apparently enough for Rika to be like, you know what, maybe this is actually the world that goes good for a change. <laughs> In this new world, the main cast is remembering all of the other worlds from the last season and are learning a few lessons subconsciously from it, so like, Rika's like, alright, let's actually try something for once. She tells Tomitake and Takano that they're gonna eat shit later, and they're like, oh, okay, well only if you let us in this shrine. Oh, also Akasaka is here and his wife isn't dead. Yeah, wow, this this world is really good by the series standards, I wonder how it could possibly go bad. Oh, that's how. Rika asks Takano and Irie to basically call a task force on her uncle, and when they say no, she hits them with the- <laughs> As always in Higurashi, they're just like, okay, well, why don't we just kill him? But Keiichi's like, yeah, it's kind of a bad idea. I, I already tried that. I can't say I rate it. Keiichi's instead like, how about we try the normal legal route for a change? W which leads to a few episodes of legal issues, personal family issues, and gathering as many people as possible to protest and support a Sonico. It's a well-written conflict with many points of interest, but it's also, like, really fucking long, so I'm just moving on. Long and short, Keiichi convinces practically everyone, including the village heads, to set aside their differences and force child welfare to hear them out. Uh, with the combination of literally everyone at Hinamizawa, they manage to legally arrest Sonico's uncle. Yay! How could any of this go bad? Well, to start, Tomitake and Takano are still idiots because they still don't listen to Rika. Okay, well, I guess only one of them is an idiot because, big reveal, Takano hasn't actually been dying at all in any of the worlds, and she's kind of the one who kills Rika every time. Okay, well, it's not her technically. The, the Yamainu, Yamainu, fucking whatever, who protect Rika get bribed by Takano to help her out with her evil plans, and they do that. So, like, they find out that Takano shouldn't have died because she was with them the night before, so they're all kind of suspicious of her. So they drop a 
shitload of things in this one episode, the biggest thing being Hinamizawa syndrome. So to put it as simple as possible, everybody in Hinamizawa is infected with a regional disease where if you leave the area or experience extreme stress, you basically go fucking insane. It just kind of think back to how stupid Keiichi is in the first arc or Shion and you get the gist. This is basically Oyashiro's curse. It, look at that, we have an explanation for it. I was totally wrong in the first episode. Also, this is why Tomitake always rips his own throat out. More specifically, Rika is the queen carrier, meaning being around her relieves the symptoms. So if she dies, then everybody basically just loses their mind and then the village is disposed of with a natural disaster, aka just gassing the entire village to death. Uh, anyways, Irie is looking to cure the disease and there's some people that would benefit from weaponizing it, yada yada, you can see where this is going. Yeah, so the Yamainu uh, quickscope Oishi. Yeah, so anyways, Rika explains everything to everyone and the Yamainu jump them so they all start fighting and yeah, Takano just starts executing everybody one by one in the woods. Rika gets killed again, but she promises to remember that Takano was a massive bitch. So yay, Takano backstory. To boil it down to just her actions, she essentially becomes heir to her surrogate grandfather's syndrome research and basically becomes obsessed with completing it in his stead after saving her when she was a child. Uh, the corporations treat her like shit and the research as well. So like, you know, she researches in Hinimizawa with Irie and Tomitake and she kind of gets like directly involved with making multiple people disappear, which causes the rumors of Oyashiro's curse. After the man giving her the okay on the research dies, the company's like, okay, well now you gotta call it off. Uh, so now she's like pressured to go full nuclear and kill Rika to cause the tragedy to occur. Uh, th this will basically make it so those who are infected with the virus all die so it can't be used as a weapon. And it also proves her grandfather's research a little bit. Oh yeah, so while all this was going on, uh, Sadako's brother did the old night in the woods on their aunt and went insane. Yeah, Rika's like, oh, well, nothing else works. So look, Hanyu's just here now, I guess. So they quite literally just will her into existence somehow. L like I've watched this show twice now and I don't know if it's ever explained how that works, but, but fuck it, just go with it. Hanyu reminds Rika that Takano killed her because she apparently forgot like an idiot and this is probably the last world. It's implied that all the characters up to this point have unconsciously learned their lesson from every failed world, which is cool because at least the last 40 episodes haven't been completely irrelevant. So they come up with the idea to have the police announce Rika's death, causing Takano to lose her shit because none of the villagers are now showing symptoms. So the main cast and Rika hide at Mion and Shion's estate. Uh, a bunch of shit goes down like, oh look, Shion has a fucking AK-47 and Rika nearly falls off a ladder. Like, imagine they go through all this shit and Rika dies from a fucking skill check. But anyways, they take Rika and Akasaka's like, hold up, let me fuck some shit up and solos the entire squad. Oh, also, I guess Satoshi is alive somehow. He's basically bedridden with disease symptoms and hasn't recovered, but hey, we got to see Kasai acting like a badass, so that's cool. So they send an entire squad of what I assume are trained soldiers with guns into the mountains and they still somehow can't win against a bunch of toddlers. The Yamainu are like, well, guess we're fucked and Takano starts losing her mind. Okay, so I was wrong. The Yamainu are actually just some guys. It turns out Tomitake is actually called the real trained people, and Okonogi, the leader, was like, yeah, fuck this, y'all can figure this out on your own. Okonogi tells Takano that her research basically means jack shit and hands her a pistol, and is like, <laughs> of course she decides she's gonna kill someone, because like, why wouldn't she? Is he stupid? So Hanyu is like, oh, child of man, end my existence instead of them, and then she just sidesteps a bullet like, nah, nah, just kidding. So Takano gets arrested, Rika doesn't die, and then everything just kind of works out after that. They go to the festival, they wake up in July, and then the show just kind of ends. So admittedly, on re-watching this, I liked this ending a lot more, but when I watched it for the first time, I was just kind of bummed out. I think it had something to do with the pacing, but if you watched this whole video and thought I know shit about anything, I don't know what to tell you. I still stand by that I'm mad that there's no dub for this season, and while the whole, oh, the power of friends thing is a bit Mickey Mouse, at least it makes sense in this story. Because like, literally, how the fuck would any of this have worked if the entire cast wasn't on board? So in my mind, this is where the series ends. I have zero interest in covering the OVAs, or Go, or so too, because in my mind, that stuff may as well be spin-off material. Also, the horror in Go and Sotsu always just kind of came off more like a comedy to me than a horror. Like, just look at this scene. This is fucking hilarious. That being said, I really did like this series. Uh, I have a lot of nostalgia for it, including the video I made on it, which, by the way, the views passed even my ReZero video, which is insane to me because that video was stagnating for a while. Just kind of goes to show you how weird YouTube algorithm is. Either way, I think this is all I have to say regarding this series. It was a lot of fun, and my rewatch of Season 2 made me appreciate it a little better, even if it's not my favorite. I appreciate the support on the content of this point. I'd be lying if I said it had no bearing on my choice to make this video. So, uh, yeah, that's the video. Uh...